Hello all, a very good morning, good afternoon and good evening uh, based on the geography and the time zones you have joined in. Uh, a very warm welcome to the webinar on overcoming the Achilles heel on uh, learning delivery and how to master the live virtual sessions. Uh, we are going to get started shortly um, in a moment. And uh, before we move on, I uh, just need to do a quick audio check uh, with all the participants on the webinar. If you're able to hear me, uh, could you use the chat box and just say, okay, a quick check on that, please. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, some of them confirming. All right, uh, excellent. And just in case, uh, because we are also dealing with a topic where there are a few audience who are not able to hear the very conversation what we are having right now, uh, we'll also help them uh, how to get uh, to speed and get the best experience. I'm going to get my video on for a moment and uh, say hello to you. So, uh, hi, my name is Anand and uh, if you're able to see my video, uh, could you just say an okay on the chat box, please? so that you can make a name to face association. Thank you. Thanks all. Uh, I'm gonna start out with my introduction and then go on the video off uh, in a moment. So warm welcome once again, and uh, I'll be a virtual facilitator for the next uh, 60 minutes. Uh, my name is Anand Tangaraj, and uh, I'm a senior facilitator with Nolscape and based out of Bangalore. And thanks for uh, all of the leaders and the participants who have joined from various organizations and uh, the various uh, roles you have been doing at this point of time to take time to attend this uh, webinar as well. So now you have a name to face association. And uh, while we go through this webinar, we'll also be dealing with some of the good practices which can help enhancing the experience. So some of you would have been doing uh, virtual sessions in the past and some of you would have been not doing virtual sessions, but more face-to-face -face sessions. In either case, we'd have a mix of audience. Some of them are new to the facilitation field altogether, but just to gain some tips, there are varied needs in which participants uh, might have for the session. In any case, uh, one of the good tip is, uh, in case you don't have a complete live video streaming throughout the session, uh, the slide like this can help uh, the audience to relate uh, a name to a face. And I'm going to start off with a very brief introduction and it's going to be uh, for the visual learners, especially uh, for the people who love to have a lot of visuals and able to connect with those visuals. This would be a good uh, way to introduce yourself as well. And I'll do that live for me. I'm going to give a pep talk for you. The pep is an acronym which stands for my passion, education and profession. I'll spend about a minute to introduce myself. Uh, my passion uh, lies around uh, 3D modeling, uh, technology, uh, photography, and also uh, books pertaining to uh, technology management and philosophy. You also see an icon, which has got uh, a lot of nuts and gears going on. You're not going to drive you nuts though, but uh, it is more about uh, to talk about the terms of psychometrics, how the human mind by itself behaves, the way it behaves. So these are my areas of passion. And on my education front, um, I have a master's in the business in Queensland University of Technology, Brisbane, and also been associated with uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon University as a teaching assistant and uh, Duke's University. The logos, what you see below, like TTTI, Success Insights, and MBTI, some of the learning and development practitioners can instantly make a connect. Uh, for others who are new to the field, uh, these are uh, logos or certifications uh, pertaining to psychometrics. Psych is mind, metric is measurement. How do you measure your talent? This is broadly about my education side. And uh, on the organizations, uh, I've been associated uh, with multiple organizations. A few of you can definitely relate to some of the very popular blue chip logos there. And been in the industry for about a couple of decades in the learning and development field in multiple capacities. Uh, currently, I'm with an organization called Nolscape. And Nolscape is a Singapore-based organization and one of the top 20 organization in the globe, which is on the gamification and assessments. Uh, we'll be talking about our philosophy very shortly. And this is my introduction uh, for you to relate me as a human, as well as as a professional here. As we transition to the next screen, uh, we are looking at uh, 
three uh, areas here. The first aspect is we'll leverage your knowledge and we'll leverage your skill and try to put them into action. Uh, that's what uh, most of the learning uh, and development professionals as well as uh, the facilitators would want to do in the sessions, either be it face-to-face -face or it being a virtual delivery. The learning gets complete only if these three elements are being taken care of and let's see how best we could put this to action in the next 60 minutes. As we transition to the next slide, uh, we are going to have about 55 minutes from now to address on various themes around the objectives of this particular session and also the tools and techniques we could use in engagement in a virtual environment. And we'll be playing a quiz. Uh, so that quiz is going to be done through mobile. So in case if you have joined this session on a laptop, uh, I'm sure uh, you'd be able to have your smartphone with you and the smartphone needs a good internet connectivity as well. That's where we are going to have an engagement activity. For those who have joined the session on mobile, uh, you may have a little bit of a challenge, but we'll see how to address that as well when you want to play the quiz. Because the quiz is going to be done through mobile, which will give you a personalized touch of how to get this interaction moving on. And the last 15 minutes, we'll spend time about, um, we'll spend time on the Q&A and some discussion there. And if there are certain questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat window. Uh, that is one of the rules of engagement, primarily because uh, when you are unmuting all the audience, when we have about uh, uh, 20 plus audience, that can actually interrupt the flow. So you might want to use the chat window for a question and uh, we can very specifically handpick and address the question. If you don't have an answer, uh, we'll see how we could address that offline, but we'll certainly make it a point to get back to you on those areas as well. So this is a broad agenda what we have for the day. And uh, the objectives as we transition here, there are three things is what we wanted to achieve here in this webinar. Uh, one is uh, to gain insights on virtual learning engagement. And very specifically, the webinar was also titled, how do you really master the live virtual sessions and also overcome the Achilles heels? Uh, that could be uh, multiple challenges uh, when we do a virtual uh, session, uh, but what really helps to address those challenges is what we are going to deal here. And uh, we'll also go through preparing a very short roadmap to facilitation. Some of the seasoned facilitators who have done multiple webinars or virtual learning facilitation in their experience would be able to add in more value uh, by bringing their insights. And some of them who are going to start their roadmap, uh, you could use uh, the learning which is going to emerge out of the session and let's see how we can make the best in the future as well. So it's a three-pronged objective. And now we are going to uh, get into a busy slide very clearly, uh, I'm sure uh, many of them would have attempted a virtual learning a session either through WebEx or through Interwise or through any of the LMS platform which you'd be using in the past. Uh, it's normal to have this kind of a slide, but it's also normal for audience to miss this because we are setting up ground rules. We say be engaged, you'll have to be participative, uh, don't do multitasking, uh, shut down any other applications like Outlook and so on and so forth. Uh, but this actually is a busy slide. Uh, people do not have the patience to go through every bullet point. Instead of this, uh, we'll get into an agreement. Uh, this is how the rules of engagement are going to be set. The first one is uh, your mobile phones can be on the mute or the vibratory mode, primarily because that can interrupt uh, another audience as well. And your laptop usage would be primarily meant for the next 40 minutes only on this session uh, that way you don't have other applications popping up and uh, interrupting your learning as well. The next one is how do we participate? How do we really engage in the session? There are two ways we can engage. We can uh, have the tools used uh, which are available like a chat box or you can unmute and speak. And if you have a question, you can use those aspects of chat box or unmuting and speaking. Uh, but please feel free to see how uh, that could be done uh, as we move forward as well. And if there is a great point given by somebody and if you have to really engage the people in a face-to-face -face setup, it's a lot more easy. We can say that, hey, you had a great point and uh, let's give a big round of applause. Uh, but in a virtual session, uh, the applause or incentives uh, to encourage the audience participation is a lot more challenging. You might want to use the clap icon, which you'll be able to figure out here. And interestingly, 
this program is not going to be tool specific. It's going to be technology agnostic. We are not going to specifically talk about the features of, uh, let us say, a WebEx or a features of Zoom, because a lot of these virtual platforms do have uh, the basic elements like a mute, unmute, video share, screen share, and so on. Uh, we could see how these tools can really come in handy for every session. And by the way, every session is going to have a very unique flavor. There is no uh, such thing called as, yes, this worked in the past, so definitely it will work in the future. You will actually have surprises coming in any sessions and wouldn't be surprised if some kind of a challenge comes even in this very similar session what we are talking right now. So here we are going to use our engagement platform called Zoom. And that's one of a way how we are going to deliver this session and quickly, uh, we are going to have uh, an intro on for those people who were on the session who are unable to join an audio. Let us assume that there are five or six people who joined and uh, they did not hear anything so far. They would not miss anything when they go into the core session. So it's a good practice for you to see uh, some of the tips on how to join video or how to use a computer audio. Because geographically, you would find some other people are very comfortable joining on the phone line instead of using their computer audio. Uh, they would use uh, different ways to join in. So those tips are also available for you. You could either use a phone line or you could use your computer audio, what you're seeing on the right side of the screen. And you can uh, unmute and mute. Uh, definitely when you're going to speak, uh, you'll have to unmute. And when you have uh, interruption and you're not speaking, you might want to mute yourself. So these are some of the basic features how we can uh, use our engagement today. And chat option, most of you are comfortable. And if those people who have not even said hello once, you'll get to have an opportunity. There is a menu bar on the bottom. You could just hover your screen uh, with the mouse or so you would be able to find out a pop-up uh, showing the menu bar. And there is a chat option uh, which you could use for today's session to drop in a message and start interacting. And we have a co-moderators also to help you out there. All right, and uh, let's break the ice right now. So far I've been talking and this is the first kinesthetic activity for you. You might want to now uh, see how you could uh, break the ice by doing three things. You could use a chat box to say your name, one keyword that describes you and the current city in which you have logged in. Can you take a minute and use the chat box please to get this input? I'm going to give you a minute to get these three things on the chat box. This is the first learning for you how to start engaging yourself. Okay, we have uh, the inputs coming in from multiple people. Okay, great. Uh, welcome all of you and I'm sure uh, you're getting the hang of it. Uh, in your sessions, because uh, you might be doing cohort sessions for about 25 people or 15 people and depends on a full day session or a half a day session or sometimes even a short session, this practice can actually help you to establish a bond between the facilitator as well as the audience. Though here uh, we have a large group, I may not be able to give a very personalized touch to all of you, but I can just say, uh, hey Subhu, welcome to the session. Uh, hey, uh, look, man, welcome to the session. Hi, Apur Kumar, welcome and so on. Uh, but if it's a large group, you might want to have uh, a very neutral welcome to say, great, most of you are able to try it out. You could use this to ice break as well as uh, interacting with your fellow colleagues. What happens is you might actually land a bumping across another uh, friend or a colleague in the same forum and you could start interacting without disrupting the flow of the session. So this is a typical way of how we doodle back in our old days. We used to have a paper sitting in the last bench and doodling something when we are really getting switched off or we want to engage into something. Uh, you could very uh, positively doodle. We encourage you to doodle uh, by interacting uh, with your fellow colleagues by a private message or saying hello and so on. Fair enough. Uh, so thanks to all of you. Uh, we have a, a mix of people joining in from uh, multiple geographies. Very warm, warm welcome to all of you as well. And I'm going to transition on to the next slide, uh, which is going to be another interesting aspect when you start uh, looking at uh, the various glossary of icons. I'm going to give you a moment here. Uh, the glossary of icons will actually help if somebody is disengaged at a point of time. 
for example they got the point very quickly okay i understood let's move on i just want to uh, quickly take another phone call in parallel they get to see if i have an icon on the top which is giving an eye icon means that is the facilitator talks uh, that means i need to hear something there is a concept being dealt by the facilitator and if you see somebody running there on the top left you can find okay there is an activity there is a kinesthetic element which will keep me hands on i can't afford to miss this part i just need to get on this one and if you see another call out like a facilitated discussion there is a possibility that it's going to be a two way communication where you're going to give a question or you're going to give a point or you're going to add a value to this so on a virtual session this is also a good tip for you to help and you're going to monitor this in this session for live uh, to appreciate how this happens all right we are going to have uh, the first pop up quiz which means we are going to have an activity uh, you're going to get uh, hands on right now uh, virtual classrooms this is a first quiz question for you please use your chat box to give your response a dash percentage of organizations uses virtual classrooms today can you take a guess on what could be the percentage of organization use your chat box all right uh, we have uh, Roshan says seventy percent, and we have uh, Eric sixty, thirty, ten, fifty. Uh, great. We'll give another ten more seconds uh, for your input. Globally, because this is an average, right? We can't be uh, accurate to a number, but this is based on uh, research from ATD, that is Association for Talent Development, formerly known as uh, American Society of Training and Development. Uh, based on a global survey, uh, this is what they have found. Okay, I'm going to reveal the answer to you right now. Thanks to all of you who have been super active giving your uh, uh, response there. And here I'm going to reveal the answer. People who are close to uh, 70%, uh, give yourself a virtual uh, uh, incentive and a pat on the back to you. Uh, congratulations to those who have got it very close. And for others, uh, this is a point to understand and reflect back. Uh, which means two thirds of the organizations are using it. But the question for you to reflect is how effective are they? So that depends on multiple factors for you to relate how effectively uh, that could be done. Is it because uh, the audience wants a face to face experience or is it because the engagement tips were not so effective? So those things could be uh, another point to reflect for all of you. Now we are going to do another activity here. When we talk about the term virtual learning environment, uh, it means multiple things, right? Um, somebody would say it's a video conference. Somebody would say it's a WebEx or a webinar and so on. Somebody would have a very different definition of a virtual learning environment. So the question for you is going to be here, provide any one example of virtual learning on the chat box, please. I'm going to give a minute or so for you to uh, get hands on right now. Fantastic, we have the inputs coming in. LMS-based interventions, self-paced programs, a Zoho webinar, and so on. Okay, one more quick tip here. Culturally, you would find uh, facilitation can happen with different nuances. It could be high context or low context, or even calling out and appreciating the participants, uh, which some of the cultures are very appreciative about it. But some of the cultures, when you use this kind of a question to engage, it's a way to ask, okay, what went well, what could be different? Or if you have a point of reflection from the audience, and if it's a detailed kind of a session when you're organizing, you might want to summarize the insights instead of reading every single line given by every participant, which is not kind of a good practice in uh, several regions. You might want to quickly synthesize and that's where there is somebody called as an asynchronous facilitator or a producer who would actually help um, to uh, either have a pre-assessed set of questions and help you with the live set of questions uh, to go through that and produce those insights as well. So co-host uh, can help uh, addressing those aspects. All right, um, thank you so much uh, uh, leaders. We have multiple inputs like uh, webinar, Coursera, WebEx and so on. So I'll uh, categorize this into three elements.
So virtual learning environment can fall into content delivery tools. For example, what we are doing right now is a content delivery, right? That is also a virtual learning environment. And you also have a different tools which are purely meant only for communication. Let us take an example of uh, a meeting based tools or uh, there is a Cisco Tanberg, which is meant only for uh, uh, video conferencing uh, for uh, a meeting which to be conducted more effectively. And there are challenges when we use a communication tool for a content delivery. That's why you find the virtual learning environment would not be a lot more engaging when you start mixing up this tool for the actual intended purpose. A video conference is, conferencing is also a great way to uh, deliver sessions because now we have um, Cisco's uh, telepresence, which is a far more superior tool, which will give uh, a very uh, live kind of a, a presence or a experience for the users. But you will also have a certain challenges when you use a pure play communication tool for delivering content. And there are also process tools which are, are there to manage the virtual learning environment. But this is just for you to understand one core point. Uh, Try to use the tool only for the intended purpose so the maximized experience can be leveraged. Now we are going to get on uh, to the next activity to get hands on here. You have multiple such content delivery tools, which is now coming up with the option called whiteboarding. Now we are going to deal with some of the challenges what you face uh, in virtual learning. Uh, some other people might say it's engaging the audience. You're not able to make an eye contact there. I can't gauge what the participant is doing. We'll get to that very shortly, but let me hear from you. We'll see how the whiteboarding can be done effectively. And there could be challenges even to load up the whiteboarding because I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to load up the screen for you. And there is a tool for annotating the text and you could start doing it as well. Let us get hands on. Even if you're not able to locate the text, it's fine because we'll have to recognize that there is a challenge what you're facing but you're going to use the annotation text tool. You're not going to use the chat box here. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'll give you the whiteboard. The control is for you to start annotating, right? Just give me a moment, please. It's going to take about uh, a few seconds for you to see uh, what's there. If you are able to see the whiteboard, uh, can you locate an annotation toolbar which says T, that is for text. I'm going to type something for you. Hello. Can you please share top challenges? The challenges could be the challenge what you face or it could be from the audience perspective as well. Uh, if you could uh, see the whiteboard, can you uh, try this option and get hands on please? I'm going to give you a minute or so. Locate for the text icon. It is a T button is what you would see when you hover your mouse. All right. Just give us a moment and uh, we'll uh, sort this out for you. And this is one of the classic Akhil seals we are also talking, right? There are challenges when certain issues are there. Uh, we'll get to that uh, shortly. Or oh, you're joining on phone. Some of them are on phone, they can't see it. Just give us a moment. You're right. Uh, Technology is not always smooth. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so I'll um, pause here for a moment, just for the benefit of the group. Uh, we'll get to this issue very shortly. Uh, one of the aspects is, other than the chat box, we might want to even look at what are other possible engagement tools. Uh, whiteboarding is one of the activity which you can do. And as I clearly indicated uh, earlier, there are challenges even to uh, locate certain uh, aspects. We'll get to that shortly with the whiteboarding activity, but probably, uh, uh, the point here is uh, look for what are the possible tools in case if there is an issue, we might want to use the chat box. You could use the chat box right now and uh,
Can you highlight one top challenge you face in the virtual learning environment? Is it uh, from a facilitator perspective or it could be even from a participant perspective? Meanwhile, I'll share uh, the screen back to you. Okay, so we have uh, the inputs on chat box coming in right now. Interesting. So the themes are centered around the audience engagement. Um, yeah, whiteboard sometimes can get messy as you saw it right now. Demonstrate the participants who actively demonstrate the disengagement. That's a very interesting uh, point as well. Right. Technical issues and engagement, participants, active engagement and so on. Uh, fair enough. Uh, so we have uh, the most prominent theme which is coming around engagement. The second aspect is coming around technology. It's not always a technology aspect. It's around the engagement, what uh, really people are doing. Because um, in a face-to-face -face session, you have a direct control, but in the virtual learning environment, we really don't know whether they are uh, in front of your system or uh, probably they have uh, taking another phone call or having a very important uh, SMS or an Outlook message being addressed as well. Broadly, we, yeah, engagement is the most prominent theme which most of the people are bringing. And that's precisely why you might want to have this clear callouts, what you see on the top left, that uh, they are supposed to do something and you would not get 100%. So we'll have to acknowledge that as well. And uh, you see what really happens, right? Um, when Murphy Laws has to strike you, it will definitely strike. Uh, we'll have multiple challenges. Either the net connectivity goes off completely from our side, or it could go from the participant side. And if you have a very uh, important um, uh, session where the stakes are pretty high, uh, then it can really uh, be a lot more messier as well. So that's the time uh, uh, you'd be able to relate to this kind of uh, situation when things have to definitely go wrong. Uh, there are possibilities it will definitely go wrong, right? So this is for you to relate here. And let's assume what really happens, right? Recovering from a disaster. Let us say we are not able to use a whiteboard. Uh, we have to use another channel. So the facilitator can take in uh, the next contingencies plan. It's like as good as you're piloting an aircraft and one of the engine fails, what is the next one? Uh, so it's uh, either uh, gliding or it's a safe landing or it's returning back to the airport. Like how you are able to relate to the movie like Captain Sully, what he did on landing on Hudson Bay, right? So we have to accept uh, some of the challenges but more importantly, to recognize that, yes, it happened. Rather than covering it up, it is always good to acknowledge that, yes, we do have a challenge and uh, we'll have to see what is the next uh, best alternative. Now, coming to the most important aspect, as majority of the people would know that uh, the body language is uh, the most powerful element which they miss in the virtual learning session. Uh, we'll have to understand the concept of uh, the digital body language and let's see how that works. So in a classroom-based environment, I'm sure uh, you could play around with this because um, half of uh, the communication, 55% of your communication, it's non-verbal, where you have an ability to play around with uh, uh, your gestures, your movement, and so on and so forth. And you have uh, the rest actually of what you communicate and how you communicate really matters. But coming to uh, this application in a virtual world, uh, some of these areas, what you're looking at right now uh, can be a big challenge. Unless otherwise um, you have your camera on and you have your content ready and uh, where it is extremely important to have an eye contact based on the context of the session, what you're doing, you might want to see uh, how effectively you could play around. The biggest challenge is you may not be able to do this effectively if your video is on and moving around whatever you do as part of your face-to-face uh, -face sessions uh, becomes a big challenge. Now look at the rest of the body language uh, tips, what you're looking on the right-hand side here. Very clearly, I'm gonna highlight with the red call out, this is the only digital uh, body language you can play around. In most of the cases, uh, a facilitator has to modulate the voice, they have to pace it, they bring in some excitement and so on and that still doesn't guarantee an engagement. So we are going to see how that can happen because getting hands-on is very critical. And it's something like uh, 
you'll have to have a scorecard for yourself. I'm going to show you a scorecard right now. Let me give you our uh, video on for a moment. Um, if you're able to uh, see this, this is what I've been doing right now. What you see on the screen right now is what is uh, I'm holding it on my screen. What it talks here is um, have a small scorecard, how to play around with uh, your voice. Some of the messages could be loud, some of the messages could be soft, and you'll have to pace your uh, communication, getting that excitement in a fast mode, or if you have a certain compelling message, you might want to go uh, pretty slow. I'll give you a few examples for you to relate here. Let us say we are going to provide instructions. This is a very good scorecard technique for uh, the virtual facilitators. You'll have to be loud. At the same time, you should not rush with the instructions. So I give very systematic uh, instructions. Let us say, hey, can you go ahead and locate your icon, which says chat box and click on the chat box. It could be anything. And if you're running a complete uh, operational process or you're doing your virtual review, or it could be something very strategic, you might want to really pace it up in such a way and categorize the scorecard upfront. You should be able to have the scorecard uh, created upfront because this is the only technique you'll be playing around for majority of time. I'll give you another example. Uh, when you're going to be fast and you'll have to be loud as well, uh, you have to create the sense of urgency. We'll say, hey, this is your action plan. We have a 30, 60, 90 days planning. And in the next 30 days, this is what we are going to look at. It depends again on the context and you could take the empowerment to customize as many situations depending on how you want to pace your speech and how do you want to modulate, you might want to use another example as well. Now coming to this one, when are you going to be slow and soft? Uh, you could use a compelling emotional triggers as well. And let us say, if I'm going to open up this webinar and say, hey, can you give an example of this? I'm sure a lot of people in this webinar will have a fantastic ideas to add in. Uh, please feel free to use that on the chat windows as well for the benefit of colleagues. But just in um, sparse of time, I'm trying to keep it uh, very concise. Uh, when do we really use these kind of tips? And the last one is, uh, you'll have to be soft and fast. Let us say you have a breakout room session uh, in the whole uh, webinar or in a virtual session, five or six breakout room and people are really thinking they would not want a facilitator to completely interrupt their thought process as well. So it becomes very important for them uh, to have a very quick message saying that, hey guys, hope you're doing well. If you have a questions, uh, please feel free to contact me. So you might want to pace it accordingly as well and start building this technique uh, very specific to your kind of needs and requirements. In simple terms, there are a lot of things which we can learn from a radio jockey. You would find a radio jockey is talking in front of a system and uh, it purely depends on the kind of energy. If your energy is completely fizzling out, uh, it is like a mirror effect. Uh, the participants' energies are also going to go down. Uh, if you're going to spice it up, uh, the participants are also going to spice it up. I'm sure a lot of people would be listening to your FM radio. They are literally doing this, what they are talking to a system and uh, they're talking live to you. There are multiple interruptions. Some of them would be talking to the radio jockey on uh, a road or some of them would be taking from a, a very noisy place or so on. But the kind of quick connects and the presence of mind can also make a lot of difference. So this is what you might want to do as you build your roadmap uh, start observing them. What kind of questions they are asking? How are they able to modulate the voice? Are they even appreciating? And are they very critiquing? Because critiquing may not be a great tip when you're encouraging uh, participation. They might think, okay, my point is not so great and so on. So you might not want to shut off them. You might want to start constantly keep encouraging them as well. And the roadmap for facilitators usually begins here. Uh, either be it a face-to-face -face facilitator or a digital facilitator. Uh, there are different engaging techniques you might want to use and uh, you might have some breakthrough questions to engage them and ask people to do it. One of the question is what we did right now said, what is your top challenge you're facing? People spoke about technology, people spoke about engagement and so on and so forth. Uh, you could use that as well. And uh, you could also use uh, involving techniques. When you say that people are not getting involved, I can ask a talking circle. In a webinar, it is difficult. Let's acknowledge it. Uh, but let us say you have just 15 uh, audience or participants in your um, session, you can do a fine deep impact. You can call out every single name of the 15 people who are in your webinar and say, let us go in a round robin fashion. 
can we go one by one uh, to tell about uh, one challenge you're facing or uh, one of the points you'd want to contribute? What is that you did differently and do on? So you could do that. Or you could say that out of 15, I'm going to have triads or I'm going to have pairing. These two guys are going to be paired together and these two people are going to be paired together. I'm going to put you onto the breakout room. Uh, can you ideate and brainstorm and come across with some great thing? So think, pair and share is another activity which you could do as well. Information, if it is like more like a monologue, it could be a presentation, you could use symbolic charades. Symbolic charades is what we spoke right now on the three different icons, right? Because if you see an eye icon, that means a facilitator talks. If you see a icon with a person running, it could be activity. You could customize this and create those symbols or mind maps as well. Brainstorming works very well uh, in a chat box. Primary reason is uh, it could be very disrupting when uh, 10 people talk together. Why 10 people? Even two people talking together uh, can actually uh, kill the conversation. So use chat box and based on that, we'll try to see how uh, ideas can be synthesized. Instead of reading out all the points, uh, the co-moderator should also support the facilitator if it is uh, a very important session and you might want to see how you could uh, quickly synthesize and take your time. And start relating one thing. I'm sure everybody had uh, days of watching television and uh, moment if there is an interruption, uh, three or four seconds of interruption and the slide or people not talking can look like a long silent time. The wait time would look very prolonged in a virtual medium compared to a face-to-face -face as well. That's another big challenge you'll face. Uh, and you'll also find uh, uh, the other aspects, how you can handle interruption as we move on. Um, you can use affinity diagram because certain tools like in a face-to-face -face session, we'll be using post-its. Uh, we'll say, okay, how you give you a post-it, can you just put across a point? And I can do a gallery walkthrough by concentrating all these post-its and I'm kind of doing a walkthrough of that. But in a virtual medium, you could do a digital uh, post-its by having those right set of tools. Some of the tools are able to support that as well, using a whiteboarding and virtual post-its to give a certain point or a conversation. And I'm going to very quickly uh, see through here. Um, now the question, what an affinity diagram means? That's a fantastic question, um, Krishnan. Uh, affinity diagram are done through post-its. For example, I can give post-its uh, in a classroom session and ask people to write a point in different uh, aspects. I can divide the group and ask, uh, hey, one of the group can give a point of view A, another group can give point of view B. Point of view A, you might use a red color post-it or a pink color post-it and people who are going to give a point of view B, they can use a green post-its. And whoever has got a red post-it, go to the wall and paste it on the left-hand side. Whoever has got a green post-it, go and paste it on the right-hand side. That is so possible in the face-to-face -face medium. The very similar approach can be done in the virtual medium as well with certain tools on, uh, available through WebEx or uh, through Microsoft uh, tools they have a separate option to do a post-it where people can have a small call out or an image where they can start playing around with this post-it as well. If that is not available, another way to do is you could have a screen and allow the people to annotate themselves. That's also another possible option to do. All right, um, so if that addresses the question, uh, Krishnan, we are um, uh, transitioning to the next slide. If it's not, we'll again uh, get back offline on the same question. All right, so I'm going to transition to the next uh, slide here. Uh, more importantly, in virtual sessions, uh, the effectiveness uh, starts dipping or the engagement starts dipping after every 90 minutes. Uh, that's why uh, we cannot have a full day session only on uh, a webinar kind of a format or a Zoom kind of a format. Uh, we might want to have appropriate breaks because uh, geographies are there. If people have to come from multiple geographies, uh, cost efficiencies has to be thought through efficiencies of scale has to be thought through and so on. Uh, that way you might want to have a 90 minute as a good span and then break it into multiple sessions or multiple days as well. Halo effect, it's a wow effect, right? Uh, everybody would want to get that hook effect, which is so possible in a face-to-face -face situation. But here, uh, a very simple halo effect example, what I tried to use was uh, giving a pep talk. Uh, it might say wow for some people. Some people will say, okay, instead of a very prolonged routine LinkedIn introduction, uh, can we start with a non-LinkedIn way of introducing yourself uh, by giving your passion and what you like and you're a problem solver, you like photography. That starts helping to make a connect with some of the audience who love photography as well. 
That's what we call as the principle of liking in Robert C. Aldini's terms. So those impressions really matters. And your sessions can have multiple compelling triggers. Uh, though we are currently talking about rational trigger right now, which is the center one is what this session is more focused on. You would find uh, compelling triggers or when people have micro stories, uh, which are going to have a very positive or um, a different kind of an emotion coming, that is an affective domain. So Bloom um, is one of the uh, great psychologists who actually uh, created a domain called as a Bloom taxonomy and has got multiple uh, domains such as an action domain, a rational domain, and an emotional domain. That's why when people uh, have virtual learning sessions or a face-to-face -face session, if you're able to have a compelling story, uh, that story can be a very powerful uh, way to relate as well. So you might want to play around with this kind of domains. Uh, with the nature of this domain, uh, we are having the center domain as well as the first domain focused on this session. So coming back to uh, the recall of what we did so far, being a one hour session, we are uh, touching on multiple tips and techniques here. Your complete success doesn't depend on technology. While we say, yes, virtual session, it's all about technology and so on. Technology is one of the enabler here. Uh, the success actually depends on rules of engagement. So here the rules of engagement was so clearly said, okay, people use a chat box to give your input or your question and so on. Uh, the engagement was there, all right? So we might want to even uh, have how that engagement goes on. So I'll come to some other questions what people have put across, like how do you encourage uh, passive learners? Uh, there is uh, no one definitive rule to encourage passive learners, but the best way is if it is an optimum size, I would say that in a virtual session, if we have about uh, 15 to 25, that is a very optimal uh, session when you can have a very good two-way kind of a communication. When it is more than that, uh, it becomes more like an informative session, what we are trying to do, and a portion, a part of the section can be interactive through this uh, chat windows. So how do we encourage a passive learner is, we might want to specifically call out names because there are certain tools in the industry which can actually tell you whether this person is actually on that particular screen of this webinar or have they've actually moved on to a different window like uh, typing a Word document or responding to an email. There are tools available called as an attention index. You could start measuring uh, people on that index as well. And without uh, putting them on spot, you might want to call out the name and say, hey, it looks like uh, we want to hear from you. You've been uh, uh, quiet for a while. Can you just share a point if you're comfortable? Or you could either use your chat window. So we can start uh, very specifically getting that input also handled. So that's one of the way to handle uh, passive learners. That's a question which came from the chat box. So quick summary here, your rules of engagement, uh, instead of having a very busy slide with multiple texts, you can create your rules of engagement. What is the success going to look like. So it has to be a psychological agreement between uh, the audience as well as the facilitator to make that happen. Now we are going to come to the conclusion here. We are at uh, 11.43. We'll spend about a 10 minute uh, for uh, this activity. This is the last uh, activity for this day. And uh, we'll have a quick summary of uh, the learnings today. So I'm going to show you uh, on the video here, right here. Uh, can you all use your mobile phone and type kahoot.it. Uh, kahoot is an uh, app which you can use for uh, engagement as well. You can use gamifications also as part of the virtual learning engagement. Uh, I'm going to give you a minute. Uh, open the browser, type kahoot.it and you should be able to see a screen uh, which is going to uh, prompt you for entering a game pin, which I'm going to give it in a moment to you. If you have got this screen, right on your mobile phones. Uh, can you please type OK on the chat window, please? Perfect. All right. Um, I'll uh, give another 30 seconds for you to get that. And I'll explain how this works. The questions are going to be popped up on the screen. The answers is what you're going to key in on your mobile phone. I'll repeat once again for the benefit of uh, people. The questions are going to be given on the screen. The answers have to be keyed in on your mobile phone. And it is multiple choice. You'll have to quickly see which is the right answer and give the answer on the mobile phone. The mobile phone will have four colored boxes. You would be able to use uh, that successfully to engage here. 
And one of the requirement is you need to have a smartphone and we go with the basic assumption uh, that everybody have a smartphone right now. But if people have joined the session on the smartphone, you might just want to note this link so that you'll be able to uh, relate how this can be done uh, separately in your sessions as well. Kahoot is a very good uh, uh, gaming platform where you could engage audience and either in a face-to-face -face or even in a virtual session. Just give me a moment. I'm going to load up this for you. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And meanwhile, uh, just be ready for uh, looking at the questions on the screen. I'll give you the game pin in a moment. You'll have to key in the six digit game pin. And once that is there, you would be able to start the questions and play the quiz as well. I'm keeping the music background pretty low. I'm going to mute it for a while because you'll be able to see the music. You'll hear the music when you start playing the game as well. Give me a moment. All right, uh, you should be able to see the screen in a few seconds and there is a pin number for you. 120392 is the pin number for you. I'm going to take uh, a minute for you to join in. Excellent. We have 11 players and I'm sure you're looking at your monitors if you're looking at your laptop and you're also parallelly looking at uh, your mobile phones, uh, which has permitted you to get into this game. All right. So there are two things, uh, participants. One is, yes, uh, we are actually doing a live session, but at the same point of time, every individual, let us say if we have a mass audience, so we have 46 players right now, which I'm able to see on the screen, 47, and it can be a little more here and there. And you might want to call out one thing very clearly. If there is a technology issue, the net goes either from my side or their side, we are going to redo the game. Or if people have it only from your side, that is the participant side, they are going to use a pin number. They have to note down the pin number and they will be able to re-log into the game as well. Fantastic. We have about uh, 52 players and I'm going to give a few more uh, seconds for people to join in because I'm also mindful of time that we have uh, about uh, 10 minutes uh, to make sure that everybody are engaged in this mass session. All right, we are going to start the game right now. You should be able to see the questions popping on the screen and keep looking at your mobile phone to key in your answers. First question, over to you. Every question has got about 30 seconds. People who get this right and people who get it fast would be on the top of the leaderboard. Four questions, Michael Caine, Benjamin Bloom, Austin Powers, and Benjamin Franklin. Who is this person? Four, three, two, one. All right. Uh, 27 of them have got it absolutely right. Uh, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, that was a tricky one there. The right answer is Benjamin Bloom, who's the father of uh, Bloom's taxonomy. You might want to go through that if people are not familiar of this one. It's a fantastic uh, taxonomy for you to relate. Uh, how do you create the objective verbs for your sessions? And uh, congratulations. We have Roshan who's leading the table, followed by Vishi, Hetsi, Jazz, and Anurag. Others, uh, congratulations. You have got it right as well. But this actually calculates who's fast and who got the right answer. I'm going to move on to the next one. Be prepared with your mobile phones. Both ILT and VLT has got the same approach. All right, uh, we have uh, 52 answers and Two seconds to close. Look at your screens right now. Interesting, uh, we have uh, a split here. Uh, the answer is wrong. That is, yeah, false is the right answer. 
IELT, that is instructor-led training and virtual instructor-led training design are way too different. We cannot have the same approach in both of this design. Uh, we'll have to have various engagement tools when it comes to uh, VILT. A lot of assumptions which works in a face-to-face -face doesn't really work in uh, ILT. All right, so we still have uh, Rochelle leading on the table and uh, Amit G is the second highest climber, 27 uh, places up. Very well done, Amit. And followed by the rest of the leaders here. The third question is for you. Ten seconds to close. Synchronous facilitation. This could be a new jargon for somebody. Some of them would know it exactly what it means. Well done. 43 of them have got it right. Uh, kudos and very well done to all of you. Synchronous facilitation is a live session led by an instructor. What we are doing right now is a synchronous facilitation. Asynchronous facilitation uh, is a different way where uh, people can take the program offline as well. Very well done, uh, HC. I wouldn't know your full name, but I'm going to call you as HC. Uh, well done there, uh, you're top of the table. Uh, followed by Rochelle, George, Vishy, and Samarpita. Very well done to you. We are moving to the next one. Multiple choice. Okay, we have uh, 52 answers. All right, so it's not about winning or losing here. Uh, this is also a, a teachable uh, moment here. You'd see 54 answers are directly proportional to 54 people directly getting engaged into a session. So this can be used at appropriate times as suitable. Uh, very well done there. Uh, we have uh, both of them are right answers. You could actually uh, look at self-paced uh, e-learning it's definitely technology driven because it's e-learning, digital learning, and it is also asynchronous facilitation. So both are right answers and uh, people who have got either of them would be there. Uh, George, well done, you're on the top of the table. Hearty congratulations to you and the team uh, who was on uh, the leaderboard right now. Let's move on to uh, the next one. The biggest advantage. Nine seconds, eight. Five, four, three, two, one. And we have 52 people who have responded. 53, that's fantastic. Uh, excellent, we have a majority of them who have got it right. Uh, if you have clicked any one of the options, you still get a score. Yes, cost optimization is there, but the most biggest one is, I would say, it's more like uh, the scale and efficiencies, right? So that's the biggest advantage what you're looking at. Well done there, and uh, George is on the top of the table. Kudos to you, and uh, Rochelle, Subha, uh, Samarpita and Vishi, uh, very well done to you. We have uh, M, it's like sounding like James Bond movie. Um, M is the highest climber there. Very well done there, M. Okay, next is a true or false. The term producer is also the co-facilitator. We have 10 more seconds there. Okay, we have a split and uh, the term producer um, is a co-facilitator. That's something which uh, is a global standard which has been uh, recognized by ATD, that is Association of Talent Development. Uh, while the roles could be interchangeably being used in a universal parlance, uh, we call the producer as a co-facilitator or a co-moderator. And you might want to have one or two co-moderators in your live sessions as well when you do a virtual session. So the answer is true and that's the right one. 
there are three important terms you might want to get familiarized of a synchronous facilitator a live person who's doing a session to you an asynchronous facilitator who would engage offline like a self paced learning and they have uh, interim engagement points is an asynchronous facilitator in a virtual mode and you also have somebody as a producer who would be playing the same role as a co facilitator who would be supporting so the producer should be moderating the questions interacting taking care of the chat box and response and so on whereas the facilitator focuses on the delivering the session and bringing the engagement piece Roshel, very well done. You are back on uh, rank here. Subha, Joy, George, and Sailaja. Very well done, Sailaja Rimit. Welcome there. And we'll move on to the next one. We have three more questions, and we'll logically wrap up with a 10 minute QA. Uh, Right, uh, fantastic. Uh, majority have got it right. Um, the answer is it is possible to even have a gamified simulation and uh, Nonscape experience has also been uh, pretty successful there. We were able to deliver simulations of even a couple of hours on virtual medium at uh, global scale. It is possible to do it, uh, but there are certain nuances to handle that as well. Well done there and uh, STG is back with the hat trick there. Well done STG and we have a new set of people. Are uh, like Albanco, who's on the top of the table, Apur, Subha, Joy, and Rochelle. Very well done, Rochelle. Wherever you are, uh, hearty congratulations to you. You're on the top. Next one for you look at your screen and your mobile phones. Okay, we have about nine seconds. All right, while the engagement is going on, uh, there are also tech challenges which might pop up. You might want to call it out and help them with support of co-moderators uh, as well here. And here, uh, fantastic, uh, this is the biggest takeaway is what I would suggest for all of the learners in this forum. The rules of engagement is the most important factor which decides whether the program is a make or break. And you're doing it very well here, uh, fantastic uh, team. Roshel, Subha, Joy, Apur, Albanco, uh, well done. And Mohammed, uh, you have up nine places, uh, very well done to you as well. We are in the end of the session, there are gonna be two more questions. Fifty people, fifty-one answers, fifty-three answers. Well done. I guess uh, fifty-three or fifty-four people have uh, been actively talking to a facilitator in a different way. Oh, fantastic! It's just one. I would have loved to see uh, fifty-four on fifty-four. That would be fantastic. Brainstorming uh, definitely can be done on VLD as well. Uh, Rochelle uh, on the lead, followed by Joy Subha, Abu Albanco, and Eric is back with a hat trick. Uh, kudos to you, Eric. This is the last one for you. Just a step and a learning. Ten more seconds for you. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Interesting, uh, give yourself a big round of virtual applause. Uh, every answer is a right answer here. Uh, there is no one, one single answer to this. Uh, Nolscape is into gamification. It's also into leadership, uh, digital leadership transformation, leadership development, and also into LMS platform assessments. Uh, so you'll get to know more about the organization uh, through their offerings, and we'll also have personalized notes sent to you. Let's look at the podium here. Um, Rochelle, uh, you lead the table, uh, very well done. Hearty congrats to you. And uh, Joy followed by uh, the second and Subha on the third. The uh, rest of the people, congratulations to all of you. Nobody's a winner until everybody wins. Everybody's a winner here. Because the point is uh, to give you an introduction about a tool which you can use it as a good engagement uh, approach as well. 
I know that we are exactly at uh, 12 right now, but for the benefit of uh, the audience, we would have another 10 more minutes, not taking too much of your time uh, to see how effectively uh, we could have some of the Q and A's. You might want to use uh, your chat box for any specific questions and we'll logically close it at uh, 12, 10 and apologies that uh, we had uh, an extra overshoot of 10 minutes time. But if people have got uh, a good sense of what we are doing so far, they are good. So I'm going to transition on to the a slide here giving a summary of what we do so far uh, on a VILT. Uh, rules of engagement is the hygiene or the core part to succeed. You could use compelling emotional triggers or a good uh, story, a micro storyteller and play around with your voice, become a digital uh, facilitator with uh, the digital body language uh, techniques. Audio environment has to be very smooth. That means you'll have to take in a situation that it's uh, free from noise and some of the questions and the facilitative techniques we used can be used for engaging, planning, involving as well. And identifying the participant cues. Uh, some of the tools are there to support whether the participant is listening or not listening. But uh, a quiz like this, what you did on Kahoot can really make sure if 50 people can really interact in a virtual mode, uh, it's definitely possible to bring in a very similar variant with a smaller group as well. And a producer or a co-facilitator is always must in your virtual session and have a complete checklist. But again, remember the Murphy's law, if things has to go wrong, yes, it might go wrong, but you might want to really stay calm and say that, yes, we have to call it out and then how we can address that. So coming to the last uh, slide here, uh, Noisecape is an organization which has uh, helped leaders to uh, grow and transform themselves as well as others in the industry. Uh, we are into multiple suit of uh, simulations. What you're seeing right now is a, a sample set of those in varied topics addressing different business challenges in the globe, uh, being agile or driving change or design thinking and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a variety of uh, suit uh, for you to relate and experience uh, on a later point of time. Now coming to the conclusion here, uh, thanks so much for uh, being a great audience and I'm gonna give you some time on the chat window uh, for uh, you to have any specific questions uh, you might want to ask and I'll be happy to address them as well. Uh, please feel free to use your chat box. Thank you, uh, Krishnan. Thank you, uh, Cruz. And I'm going to uh, check on some questions. Uh, how many people you can use on Kahoot? Okay, by the way, Kahoot has uh, got a free option, a school teacher option, and also there is a paid option. You could have 2000 players uh, playing uh, at a point of time in Kahoot. So you could play that in a one-on-one -on -one mode, you can play that on a team mode as well. Kahoot is not open source, uh, Padma Kumar. Uh, it's a, a paid tool. Uh, you have a free version with uh, certain limited features. Uh, it's like a freemium business model, but you also have a paid version called as a Kahoot Pro. You can experiment that as well. Thank you, uh, Jyoti. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mohammed. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's a great uh, tool as well. And I'll see uh, a few more questions. Oh, there is a free version. Yes, Abur, there is a free version of Kahoot. You could use a uh, Kahoot for free as well. You might uh, want to look into that particular option when you go there. You could use that. Thank you, uh, Subha, and I'm sure there are some takeaways you could take it back to your team as well. And uh, suggested duration of a webinar. A webinar of more than 90 minutes is not recommended. Anything beyond 90 minutes is not effective on a virtual session. You might want to give a break, let them re-energize and then come back because you're looking at a screen for a long time can be hurting on either sides. So 90 minutes is a good time. Pull factor on VLE, uh, you might want to have incentives called out, uh, bringing in the pre-assessment of right qualified audience into the session also can be a great pull factor. And uh, engaging tools like a Kahoot or a quiz or visual quiz uh, using the right platform can also be a pull factor uh, for them to join in. Yes, Anandita, there are multiple studies which have been done on VILT. Uh, you could uh, go to ATD.org, Association of Talent Development, uh, ATD.org for uh, good reports, as well as Burson reports. The latest Burson reports have also got study on uh, effectiveness of VILT. Uh, 
while there are uh, different uh, thoughts to that uh, it has been used and going forward uh, considering uh, the world moving into a digital era there are going to be a new set of job roles and skill set coming how people can become a virtual learning facilitator as well so we can start getting our inspiration from the radio jockeys to get into that mode all right uh, any other questions uh, thank you uh, shantani yes for a technical session uh, we might want to have a good amount of hands on uh, and have co moderators to support them and breakouts to support them if you are doing a technology uh, session like excel there have been even uh, technologies like mainframe sessions programming coding sessions also be done can be done as well how do you address uh, the engagement during breakout sessions uh, you might want to have uh, two or more moderators who would be observers in each of the breakout sessions because when breakout session is happening the biggest challenge is if i have somebody to call out whom should i really look upon so you might want to have uh, one moderator for each of the breakout session that way you might have very focused and hyper personalized experience there as well uh, thank you so much uh, there uh, for uh, an input there uh, samarpita that's a peer learning and really appreciated uh, you could use screen sharing as a tool as well and some other tips there fantastic and i'm sure some other people are uh, going through the chat questions for them to relate um, oh sure i'll uh, relate uh, the website is uh, kahoot uh, if you are uh, asking for what was done there that is one of the tool what we used last and uh, we have about 5 uh, more minutes uh, just to uh, have a quick summary of the session okay real time learning uh, how do we really assess uh, the only way to assess is making uh, uh, a participant to call it out uh, or having engagement tools like a kahoot or any kind of a quiz to say that hey uh, we saw something uh, as a framework right now can we try this in action so whatever they learn if they have a small window of opportunity to experience it in the session uh, you could assess the real time learning as well and depends on the kind of objectives you have framed um, so if here if i were to give an example how do we use a chat window that could be one of the call out or a framework or a technique we teach and immediately after that we said we'll have a nice breaker to introduce yourself uh, can be an application of learning you can see how the assessment goes on and if it is a cohort of a smaller group you could actually see the learning getting percolated as well and you might want to have a unmute button if it's a small uh, uh, group so that the rules of engagement are even stronger so that the dialogue goes on here the dialogue is more like giving a whatsapp reply or it's like using a chat reply here that's another way to do it when you have a large audience fantastic abur i really really appreciate this uh, there are inputs uh, for others to uh, see the input given by uh, apur kumar a sandbox environment or testing environments on mooc uh, massive open online course can also be a great uh, tool you might want to leverage how to make a breakout groups in vilt uh, sunil will uh, give uh, those options because uh, it is very tool specific some of the tools uh, content delivery tools have got a exclusive option by clicking uh, divide the groups into four or divide the groups into five automatically the participants will all be put into separate breakout rooms that is more like a virtual uh, a room where people can have group discussions here nobody has done that because consciously we wanted to have focus for everybody on one common room what you're doing right now so that is an option to do that uh, on webex on zoom and there are few other platforms you could do that effectively as well thank you mentimeter.com or quizzes.com is also other tools where you can have engagement great one our team so we are um, really grateful to you for sparing the extra 10 minutes of your time so by and large i hope uh, you all had a great session and thanks to you for a great engagement on uh, multiple aspects and i thoroughly enjoyed uh, uh, interacting with you virtually and once again uh, hearty congratulations to all of you and especially for those people who are on the uh, session as well so let me take this moment to thank all of you and uh, wish you all the best and we'll stay in touch thank you
And for those, if the questions that have not been addressed, uh, please feel free to drop a note uh, to us. Uh, we'll be happy to help you in your journey. Uh, all the best to each one of you.